Once I received a message from another photographer explaining to me how he had to use HSS to freeze motion. In this video, I want to explain to you that it's not necessarily the best tool in order to freeze motion. And on top of it, I got a BTS. So you need to freeze motion for a still photo. So while HSS is a viable option to do so, it's not necessarily the most efficient tool in order to freeze motion, and I'll explain to you why in this video. Before looking at HSS, we have to look at the science behind those lights that we like to use. Uh, the most important or critical factor in freezing motion is not actually HSS, but it's really light duration. So what is light duration? is the length of time that your light actually uh, reaches peak power and then cuts off. I keep using in the video for some reasons uh, T.01, which in fact is 0 0.1 uh, for some reasons. My brain was just off that day, so apologies for that. So if you see uh, T.01, it's actually 0 0.1 and same thing for 0 0.5. Thanks. So most light manufacturers such as uh, Godox, Profoto, Broncolor, or any of them uh, uses a metric called the T.01 in order to measure the light duration of its light and uh, basically it becomes a very fair standard to compare um, uh, A to B and B to C and B to D because uh, there used to be the 2.05 but the T.05 is typically very slow and it's uh, very confusing and in order to clean that up the ISO community, I'm not sure who they are, are uh, decided that uh, the T.01 was the uh, best measurement in order to measure light, uh, actually uh, light duration in uh, the manufacturers. So what is the T.01? The T.01 is a flash intensity when it reach, exceeds 10% of its max brightness. And T.05 is simply the same thing but at 50%. But again, as I said, a pro tip, uh, if you see a light measurement that is T.05, it is typically uh, indication of, uh, again, it's a very general blanket statement there, but it's important to know that generally it means that it's a slower light than the T.01. So just be careful of that. If you see a light that's, that uses, again, the T.05, it might be slightly misleading and you might want to stay away from this if light duration is important to you. Another trick to uh, keep in mind whatever you're shopping or you're looking at lights is most lights uh, are actually less uh, effective at keeping that light duration short when it's at full power versus at lower power. So basically the light duration is much longer whenever you're using more power versus using a lower power settings. So if you want to really, really freeze motion, try to use the lowest, lowest flash settings that you have. And also uh, another pro tip is if you have speed lights, uh, speed lights are actually pretty efficient at, uh, at keeping the light duration very fast because the way that they're built, they are extremely fast at freezing motion. So there might be a worthwhile uh, companion if ever you're doing power shoot, let's say, uh, using light splashes. Uh, in order to freeze the motion, speed light might be your best friend in that case. But let's go back to the HSS subject. So the problem with HSS, again, goes back to whatever I said before about light power. So HSS, as you know, if you go, uh, let's say to 1 8,000 in I mean, most cases you'll have to go to full powers or one to one. And one to one power, uh, again, is the least efficient um, light duration of most lights or any lights that you might have. So again, using HSS as a means to freeze motion might freeze it because the shutter speed is so high. But if you want to actually really freeze the subject, it might be the most inefficient way actually to make sure you freeze the subject. So HSS is not really recommended if you want to use uh, your flash to free subjects. So if you again are in the market for shopping for lights so you want to know the capabilities of what you're using as a light, a good visit to actually do would be to actually visit your manufacturer's light and see what they say. Uh, we can look at three examples here. So the first one, the one I'll be using in that video is the Einstein 640, uh, which is again, uh, if you look at the readings that they give you online, the at full power, so basically at uh, one to one, the reading is one to 588, uh, which is actually pretty uh, quick if you compare it to, let's say, uh, the 8600, which actually measures at one 220th, which basically is almost a uh, twice as fast at full power versus the 8200. At its lower settings, so at 100, 1 to 256, 
so this is the lowest setting for the policy buff Einstein 640. It reads at a pretty blazing fast 113,500 seconds, which is really, 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 really fast. Now, if you look at other systems like the Pro Photo or the Power Packs, which are pretty powerful, at full power they measure at 1 to 2200 of a second, and at lower power they measure at 1 to 12,000 seconds, which is again pretty fast. And the 8600, which is the least performing thing, even though they go to high speed sync and go, can sync up to 1 8000, at full power pop, as I said earlier, they go to 1 uh, to 220 of a second. And at uh, lower power, they claim the manufacturer that it goes to 1 to 10,000 of a second, which is uh, pretty comparable to the rest, but not as fast as the Pulsi Buff or actually the Pro Photo Pack, at different costs, of course. What's well, a fun comparison also if you compare the Pro Pack, which is kind of pricey uh, for the Pro Pack and one head. I think it ranges between like three and four thousand from memory. And if you go to look at the Einstein, which is about five hundred and something dollars, there's a big gap in pricing. But in performance, the Einstein can keep up really, really well with the Pro Pack, except at its full power pop. So now let's put that in practice and look at the Einstein 640 and a ballet dancer, or in this case, a jumper. So I bought this uh, really fancy schmancy trampoline in order to make my subject jump. And also I booked this uh, subject because she was really good at jumping and showing a great motion. And I specifically did that for this video. So the great thing about the Einstein is the IGBT mode that is included into every Einstein 640 system. Uh, the IGBT mode stands for, I'm gonna read this, insulated gate bipolar transition. So basically what it means in layman terms, it's a, transistor that uh, can handle high current but can switch on and off very effectively the light so basically that's why the Einstein has a very very good management of its light duration. So I've done two things here in that uh, behind the scenes. I shot in color mode which is to me my uh, critical test for this set uh, for this test. I wanted to make sure that uh, whenever I get on set uh, and I have some moving subjects and I'm on location that my lights would actually freeze the motion correctly and using the right colors. Uh, since I really, really dislike to go into editing and then figure out that like one third of my photos have a different color balance than my uh, other set, in which case it becomes retouching hell. And the second thing I did is shot on sports mode, which is included in the Einstein 640, uh, which promises to actually shoot, uh, actually light even faster than the color accurate mode. So again, my test for this, my, my idea for this test is uh, one, to have someone jumping in trampoline at uh, very high heights, which is really fun. It was really dangerous at some points. The second test would be to keep her hair loose in some shots, just to make sure that uh, whenever I see something, uh, I mean, to me, the hair is a good test because it moves at its own will. And whatever you're jumping, this will be, there will be an item of motion you can see. And this would prove in my non-scientific test that actually the uh, Einstein can keep up, even though I'm strobing. It can also keep up in terms of uh, keeping my subject sharp and also keep up with my movement because I'm not always perfectly timed with the fact that when she's jumping, I'm not pressing the shutter at the exact same, same time. And I wanted to make sure that whenever I go loose and goose with my shutter, uh, it actually uh, can sync up and match. And for the black background, what I did is I went into sports mode. So I uh, really made sure that I uh, turned on this action mode or the sports mode on the Einstein 640 in order to capture as many stills as I can uh, while doing this. I have to say though that it really kept up with my shutter speed. Although the Nikon is not really the DA10, sorry, is not the quickest uh, at uh, doing burst mode. It was actually keeping up pretty well with the uh, burst shot. So I'll show you a couple of shots in a few seconds. All the shots were taken at one to 200, 200th of a second uh, to stay consistent. And also to, uh, I could go to 250th, but I decided not to because sometimes I get some black bars because my transmitter is sometimes wonky. Uh, also, I shot most of these at f7.1 uh, because I don't want to shoot depth of field. It's not the point here. Uh, the subject moving, I didn't want to focus too much. And ISO 100 because ISO 100. And the lens here used with my DA10 is the 15 millimeter 1.8 G because it is the fastest lens that I own. I, uh, with all my Nikons, most of my lenses are vintage lens and I, uh, again, these are a bit slow compared to the new ones. So I want to make sure that everything was captured fast. So the first thing you see here is uh, me prepping the background. So I like to add elements and go slowly. So I'll be taking one shot, take another. And then I built this canvas for this, but it just didn't work out. It, I wrinkled, I wrapped it too quickly. It was not dry enough and it left me those beautiful wrinkles. So 
Uh, moving on to another set, I like to use the tone on tones or the color on color, the monochrom monochromatic look, uh, especially she was she's uh, she's black. Uh, she's also wearing a tan suit and the beige background just worked really well. And also the big V flat here is for negative fill because I like shadows. They're great. Okay, so um, after I basically uh, build a set the way I wanted to, I typically give her a lot of instructions on how I want those shots, so how I'm going to work. Okay, I'm gonna, only going to try to take the top three shots when you're landing. Not, before, not when you're landing, but when you're reaching your peak. And then you may be decreasing a bit. That's where I. That's my go-to zone. So I told her peak. Whenever you peak, peak your pose also. So you see, you can see the first results here. They look pretty good. I really like uh, out of camera. I should have maybe bumped my can my background a little bit, but I believe that was at maximum of my. Uh, I was at 10 feet, so I could not go higher. But we can all fix it in post uh, if we're stuck like that using the great pen tool. Again, giving back uh, feedback and instructions. So I can get the shot. I really like the thinking that you should get the shot that you want to at first, and then you can work on some other stuff. So again, more shots uh, with the policy buff in color mode, which kept up really, really well. And also a big pro tip I'm gonna give you for the color mode or whatever you're doing. Let's say with two lights, and you're trying to freeze motion. Uh, make sure that your uh, your lights or your power pack, whatever you're using. Are at the same power level so an example uh, if you have your main light uh, that is maybe uh, one stop or two stops higher than your uh, fill light then you're gonna have some issues because they will be shooting at different speeds uh, again light duration will be uh, let's say shorter in the fill light versus the main light so keep that in mind moving on to the white set uh, same concept again I just want to see if uh, it worked well especially I had to let the back have a bit more contrast for using those things and the background light was so 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 much slower and it, it created a bit of shadows in the feet nothing critical but something you have to keep in mind when you're shooting so sports mode uh again this was interesting because uh what i did is i just went on burst mode and let my camera rip and uh, surprisingly the boss buff really kept up but with the caveat that um the color was a bit all over the place so I personally think the way to integrate the sports mode, the action mode of the Einsteins into your set would be to, if you don't have that many images to deliver, then it should be totally fine. If you have three, you can play around until you get the perfect results or the perfect RGB values in some areas. And um, this will keep up because you'll have sharp images or should shoot in black and white. But uh, for anything else, I would be a bit, a bit careful because uh, it, get, it goes to magenta, to green, to magenta, to other colors of the spectrum and I wouldn't advise it if um, you're not ready to spend a bit more time in post in order to retouch those photos that have different color sets because uh, the sports mode again is really great, it really really kept up with your burst shots which is awesome but color is all over the place. So something to keep in mind and I'll be leaving the rest of the behind the scenes, we have about 30 seconds there. So in summary, I hope uh, this was helpful to understand that light duration and uh, high speed pink are not necessarily the best friends. Uh, that uh, HSS is not the optimal solution to freeze subject. Yes, you can go to one eight thousand of a second, but the metric to freeze uh, a subject that is in motion using flash is actually the light duration of uh, your flash. So again, if you're paranoid about the uh, light duration of your light, uh, go make sure you check out your manufacturer's um, uh, website and also uh, do the testing yourself. So go get like something like, like this, like the Lumo Power. Uh, we, can sh we can test the T.01 uh, of your light and that's gonna give you a way better accuracy, accurate reading uh, versus using your manufacturer's uh, claim on the subject. The reason being is sometimes, you know, marketers, they tend to like, push a little more what's one nine thousandth, what's one ten thousand, you know, what's the difference between those? It might be critical for your job and if you're paranoid and you really want to be uh, careful about what you're buying and where you're investing your money into your photography gear, uh, these tools can help you really get some accurate readings so we can say, okay, this is not working for me because even though I shoot at one two hundred fifty six, 
uh, that incremental one thousandth of a second is important to me. So again, if this video helped you in any shape or form or you learned something new here, uh, please consider giving a like and subscribing. This will help me understand that you actually like this video and I will be pushing more content. Again, if you have any questions about the subject of light duration, HSS or anything else, you can fire in the comments below. I'll be looking at the comments and answering all of your questions if you have any. And also all the gear that I'll be, uh, that I sh uh, demonstrated in that video will be all linked below. So thanks again for watching. I hope you appreciate this. I'll be wishing you a happy shooting and most importantly, happy freezing of motion and light duration.